Okay, I have to speak loud. In fact, shout, because Samsung Galaxy can't create a phone that has a decent microphone. And if you want to uh, be recorded at a louder recording volume, I think you have to buy some additional microphone. So that's horrific. And uh, Galaxy should learn from that and never do that again. So anyway, forgive my bad attitude, but, you know, when you make videos and the recording volume's all quiet, it's no fun. But anyway, this next video is very much like the last one, and I'm just doing it to record the process. You can even see a little bit that um, the LED is flickering. So this next example, which is the Hsiao Lung Chan example, um, must be blinking at somewhat of a slower rate. Okay, so I have it hooked up to the scope as well. Here it is. I'll change the sample rate or whatever you call that. Okay, good morning. So I'm just covering this code just for the sake of the learning process. This comes from this PowerPoint outline on PIC18 timer programming. Here's the code on page 24 of that PDF type file, which I will leave as a link in the description below. I'm just going to read these comments. Generate a square wave of 50 hertz on the port B.5 bit if XTOL equals 10 megahertz. Timer 3, 16 bit internal clock, no prescale. So there's, in many chips, there's more than one timer in the 18F family of microchips. My chip is certainly like that. So, my previous video, I looked at timer 0, now I'm looking at timer 3, and that's really why I'm making this video, because I want to explore and investigate and learn about that. So, he's moving a literal of 0 into the timer 3 register. Apparently, this is selecting 16 bits, uh, the internal clock, and no prescale. Well, this is the data sheet for my particular chip, 18F4525. I'm just going to assume that Hsiao Lung Chan is using a similar chip, and he sent all zeros to this register. So what does that exactly mean? for the T3CON timer 3 control register. So this first, actually most significant bit, bit 7, 16-bit read write mode enable bit. And he's sent a zero there. So this enables register read or write of timer 3 in 2-bit operations. It says that bit 6 down to bit 3 uh, timer 3 and Timer 1 to capture, compare, X, enable bits. So this is using the CCP and... Hmm. So it's Timer 3 and Timer 1 to CCP enable bits. Hmm. Timer 1 is capture, compare, clock source for CCP1. Well, he set them all to 0. Oh, bit 6 and 3. And then there's 5 and 4. 
that's the T3 CKPS1 timer 3 input clock prescale select bits. So two bits, four combinations, select a prescale value. Next is bit 2. T3 sync, timer 3, external clock input synchronization control bit. And he set it to a zero, so synchronize external clock input. Although his work is on paper, it's on a PowerPoint, it's on a PDF. Who knows if he's actually implementing an external clock or it's just a random number he came up with. Uh, when TMR3CS equals zero. This bit is ignored. Timer 3 uses the internal clock when TMR3CS equals zero. And that TMR3CS is bit one. So if that's a zero, it seems to affect bit two somehow. I don't want to think that one through too much. Uh, and then external clock source select bit external clock or in or internal clock. 0 TMR3 on enables timer or stops timer I zoomed up to T1 con it has a similar type of bit as the least significant bit but just for comparison's sake T0 con timer 0 had this uh, enable timer or stop timer bit as bit 7 so this gentleman wrote zeros to all these bits. And he did select a 16-bit timer, so that's going to have two bytes. I guess he's calculated his delay time, and he's loading up the high and low byte accordingly. So I want, I want to copy this and just see where it shows up if at all, in my data sheet. I think it will. So yes, it does. Yeah, so these are two timer 3 register high byte and low byte, and there are no bits to be set in here. I, I'm, I take it it maybe just accumulates a byte's worth of zeros and ones. So much the same as my last video and the last example timers the timer high and low bytes are loaded up and then there's this bit clear f pir2 tmr3if clear timer 3 interrupt flag so here is the register within my data sheet for the 4525 pir2 peripheral interrupt request flag register flag register 2 and he's clearing this bit in particular TMR3IF this TMR3IF is bit 1 TMR3IF TMR3 overflow interrupt flag bit I guess to clear it is to set it to 0 um, does that have to be software cleared? I didn't see that in the data sheet. It didn't say that. But maybe it just is. Call delay, so he set up the delay as a separate subroutine. Bit toggle port B. He's toggling that output bit he set up and branch goes to here to load up these high and low bytes. His delay bit set up T3 con TMR on. I already looked at that. That just starts the timer. Again, bit test um, this flag register, which he cleared up here. So he bit tests that, which I guess is the overflow monitor timer 3 interrupt flag. No wait, that's not an overflow, that's an interrupt. But it's still called 
Timer 3 overflow interrupt flag. TMR3 IF. Yeah, so this is still an overflow interrupt. Bit test F skip if set. So it'll set if it overflows. And if it's set, it skips the next line. But if it doesn't get set, it just iterates through here and kind of hangs here for a little while until it does get set as an overflow. And then it'll skip this. It'll bit clear this timer 3 on, which will basically stop the timer. And it'll return to where it was called from, which I suppose was here. And then it'll toggle that output pin. And then it'll branch back up to here to be reloaded with those calculated values for a time delay. Be interesting to contrast and compare this with the previous example in my previous video, but it looks like it works much the same way. And he even references the popular textbook and maybe another textbook. Thank you.